How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and teachers? My name is Paul, and electrical engineering is my business. And today's very special business is the problem of the resistor cube. We talked about it yesterday uh, in the video about Professor Julius Sumner Miller. I'm going to put a link down below to um, a YouTube channel that has all his videos. I urge you to watch them. They're fantastic. So we built the cube yesterday and we talked about finding the ohmic resistance between two points. And I told you that the answer is 5 6 of R. We're assuming all of these are the same value. Doesn't matter what they are. And then I challenge you to solve it. But uh, nobody has the solution as of yet. I haven't looked just in the last couple minutes to see if anybody posted the solution. So I'm going to show you how I was taught to do this. And then I'll show you the solution. So the way to do it is pretty simple and it involves just recognizing echo potential points points of the same voltages and then shorting them together once you do that we can calculate the parallel resistances and add them up so let's examine the cube consider the following as professor miller would say the cube is a, is a structure consisting of 12 resistors they're electrically connected between eight vertices Let's say they're one ohm, like I said, but any value can be used. So due to symmetry, okay, the potential at three nodes are equal. Since no current flows between nodes with a potential difference of zero, they can be shorted together without affecting the circuit's integrity. This is Kirchhoff's current law. So hopefully you can see the colors. Let's grab the purple pen. And we're going to say, we're going to hope the pen writes. Yeah, there we go. We'll call this alpha here, alpha here, and alpha here. So these nodes, our purple nodes, can be shorted out there is zero potential between them. Now we'll move on to the second set of nodes, which we'll call beta. There's a beta. There's a beta. And there's a beta. So these three nodes also have equipotential. There's no voltage difference between them, therefore no current can flow, therefore we can short them out as we do our analysis. Now let me draw out what we've just done here. I'm going to pause so you don't have to watch me drawing. Alright, so this is our shorted alpha node, this is our shorted beta node. And if we label them with the resistors that we had labeled here, this is A, B, and C. Over here we have J, K, and L. And in the middle is everything else. D, E, F, G, H, and I. Now let me zoom out a little bit so that you can see both parts of what we're talking about here. So this over here is our beta node. I did the alpha in purple. And this over here is the alpha node. So then we get to short out these and we get one third. Same over here, one third. And what's left in the middle is one sixth. A little bit of mathematics tells us that one third plus one sixth 
plus one third equals five sixth. And that's the solution. It's really that simple. And it's all based on Kirchhoff's current law. Just remember the nodes have zero current flowing between them. And that's it. Super simple. And as Professor Miller would say, it's not how much you know, it's what you understand. So now you understand how to solve the resistor cube problem. And if you ever apply for a job as an electrical engineer, there's about a 50-50% chance you'll be presented with this problem. And if you don't know how to solve it, you're not getting the job. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Now, I don't want you to think that I have forgotten about our... Where's it at? Amplifier video. I am putting uh, the AD9833 synthesizer together. I got, I found one speaker at my mother's house, but that's better than no speakers. So assuming my internet comes back on tomorrow, I will make that video and upload it. This one I'm filming and going to upload on my phone, so eh, might not be that great. That's it. I'm out. Peace.